Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, and this in our series will be part 283. The title today will be The Inheritance, part 2. <clears throat> the last lesson we had on the inheritance, we showed, we saw where the sons of God, the sons of the adoption, would be rulers over the light energy of the creation, that they would be the, the force in which light intensity would regulate all life in the secondary creation for a thousand years. They would also be the inheritors of the light of the primary creation. They would use this light to bless, they could also use the light to judge. Today we're going into a <clears throat> another portion of the inheritance to just give us an idea of what it is that's waiting for us in eternity if we become overcomers. Now, if I can very quickly ask, yes, can you reiterate, please, that uh, this is for those at home. The use of the term "the sons of adoption" is a rendering of the sons of God. You're referring specifically to the Prototicus. Yes. Okay. Yes. As the scripture says in Romans, the 8th chapter, we are waiting now for the redemption, the adoption. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, according to John, the 16th chapter, would show us all things that the Father has, which have been given into the hands of the Son. Now, what we find, turn to Revelation 21, verse 7. Here we see the principle reiterated. Revelation 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the Father speaking. <clears throat> when we take a look at the concept of all things, you can spend a lifetime just pursuing the things that he's referring to that become ours as we enter into the adoption. Of course, we don't have a lifetime to do that. Time's very short, but we're going to cover as much as we can. <clears throat> what will we inherit? One of the things that we will inherit, Scripture teaches a driving force that the prototopus will inherit to oversee the creation is the cloud element. He will use the cloud as a transport vehicle, just as God does. Turn to Psalms 104, verse 3. <coughs> Can a cloud be used for anything else apart from a transport vehicle? Quite a lot. Okay. Psalms 104, verse 3. Talking about God. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. So the cloud becomes the chariot of the overcomer, his vehicle. It has many uses. We're going to take a look at uh, some examples of this. Turn to, X, uh, turn to uh, Numbers 11.25. Numbers 11.25. 
The Bible is filled with examples of this. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not see. So he transports in a cloud. We see this consistently. Turn to Exodus 19. Verse And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. Moses told the words of, of the people unto the Lord. <coughs> Turn to Isaiah 19, verse 1. burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. The idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. The heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. So during the, <coughs> the period of time of the millennium, tribulation period, the saints Glorified saints will be using extensively clouds hmm. for many different purposes. Yes. How many times do we see YHVH riding a cherubim? Well, there's an allusion to him uh, a, a couple of times on about it. Why would he ride a cherubim when he's got a cloud? <laughs> hey, hey, it's nice to have a choice. You know, he mocking, he's, got he's, mocking he's got options. He's got options. Well, some of them are designed to be his transport. Yes. Along the lines that he's drawing, it's a personal chauffeur if he's riding a cherubim. Okay, a cloud is a an automobile. You know, it's just a it's a it is a life form, but uh, it's so not. It's to drive but the thing of it is, is my question, Mr. Jones. Yes, is that going to continue? Is YHVH going to continue riding a cherubim? No, no. Is the sons of God going to ride any cherubims? No. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, <coughs> We're going to drop down to... <coughs> Matthew 24, verse 30. Here we get into the personal use <coughs> of the clouds.
Matthew 24, verse 30. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Mm. Now here he uses the term, the clouds. Hold your questions. Turn to Luke 21. You know as well. Luke 21. Verse 27. <clears throat> then shall they see <clears throat> the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. <clears throat> now why does one say the clouds, the other says a cloud? Because he's riding his own cloud, the other, clou the other clouds are the, the sons of God. Exactly. Well done. Exactly. Now, why is this? What we find the difference? The principle is <coughs> the saint becomes the controller of the clouds at the time of his glorification. Turn to 1 Thessalonians 4th chapter. Verse 17. <clears throat> that poses a question. That we which are alive and remain <coughs> shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, <coughs> Paul here is referring to the rapture. He's referring to the dead in Christ descending first, being glorified, rising to the clouds that are waiting for them. The living then become changed into a glorified state. They arise into their clouds and they all surround the Lord with each one's cloud. Yes. As the clouds, very specific clouds for transport, or can any cloud be used? No, 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 no. You, you, you have a custom-made vehicle okay. for you. Turn to Revelation, 14th chapter, to the Revelation 7th chapter. We're going to read verses 7 to 12. Revelation 7, 7 to 12. Um, I'm sorry, Revelation 11, ah. 7 to 12. It refers to the two witnesses. <clears throat> when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Talking about Jerusalem. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. <clears throat> and great fear fell upon 
them which saw them. <clears throat> and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. When the saint becomes a victorious overcomer and glorified, he ascends into a cloud. Yes. What I'm trying to nail down is whether the cloud is like a horse. You call it, it comes. Or can you just pick a cloud and say, I want that one? You're talking about earthly clouds. The earthly clouds are temporary. Right. This is not... To These be are heavenly clouds. Sure. Okay. What do they look like? My clouds. Like earthly clouds. I knew you'd say that. Right. <laughs> so I can see <clears throat> what we will we'll, we'll think... Mm. And it happens. Will, it's gonna yes. ha and yes. it happens. Right? Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Well, you're not going to think it. Who doesn't think it? <clears throat> it's part of your inheritance. It's already done. You have a cloud. It's already there. But he's talking about when he wants to use the cloud. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Afterwards. Mm. But before that, <clears throat> this is the initial part in which you and the cloud come together. Right. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. So this is the, the, the merging. This is the everybody experiences gotcha. this. Turn to Acts. Okay. First chapter. <clears throat> Acts the first chapter, verse 9. <coughs> and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. When you're, when you're completed here, <coughs> and the glorified tradition, in, in other words, the finishing aspect of your life here is done, <clears throat> the last thing that will happen will be you re being received into your cloud. But this is not the first time that Jesus goes up into his cloud, is it? Yes, it is. Did he not go up in a cloud when he... Um, no. 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 Because no. <laughs> his job wasn't finished. Yes. So, Mr. Jones, yes. I'm trying to break it down to where Jesus performs an act which produces a cloud. Mm. But it's as if the cloud is waiting to be used at the beckoned thought of, yes. from Jesus. Yes. He doesn't have to do anything. It's there already. Yeah. Does go ahead. I'm just thinking now because of what he said. Does the cloud have sentience? Sure. So it knows what you want, in other words. Every life form <coughs> has sentience. The cloud is more intelligent than humans are. But does it know what the thing he wants to use? Yes. Is the cloud. The cloud already yes. knows. Yes. 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 Okay. Because the cloud's connected intimately gotcha. with okay. its owner. Okay. So then you don't have to think. I want it. No. Right. No, no. Is it a spiritual cloud or is it a physical cloud? Spiritual. It's, spiritual cloud. it's okay. no physical. So there, no. it's not cloud vapor. No. No. Well, we understand <coughs> everything here is temporary in the physical. The cloud's eternal. You're always going to have that cloud. The cloud basically <coughs> has no limitation. Would you describe the cloud as a being? A spiritual being. Think of it as a horse. A horse is a being. Sure. Okay. So it's a cloud. All right. <coughs> More of a door. <coughs> no. Jones. No, it has, it has um, intelligence. Mm. It knows exactly what needs to be done when it needs to be right. done. Uh, YHVH comes down in a cloud. YHVH uses a cloud. We're going to go into some other uses for the cloud. Uh, this is life in the heavens at the highest level. So, Jonesy, that gives it a high degree of sentience 
holiness, if you will. Sure, sure. And it's just a thing mentioned, a vehicle. It's, there is no name for it that's been spoken of. There is, is there, it's a... It's your inheritance. You inherit all things, all life. But it's not a created cloud, is it, or is it? Yeah. It is? It's father Certainly. Mm. The, fa <laughs> the father creates it for the son as part of their inheritance. <laughs> well. And think of it as part of your estate, the fullness of your, your estate. <clears throat> yeah, that, part of yeah, your... Yeah, makes it oh, a piece of cake. Thank you. <laughs> Showing me right where the doorknob is on the switch. <laughs> yes. I'm um, presenting this so we have something to chew on. Life in heaven, I've been saying this for a while, is radically different than life on earth. The Holy Spirit wants us to enter into a comprehension from God's perspective as sons of God. So you get off the earth, get off of this limited, limited pseudo-reality, because this is yours. It's waiting for you, belongs to you. And the scripture waits for us just to enter into it so it can impart the knowledge of what's waiting for us to us. So it already exists then. It's already there. Mm. Waiting for you. Yeah. When can I call it? When you get glorified. And not before. Not before. Because mm -hmm. we haven't qualified for it. Okay. Now. <clears throat> We're going to take a look at some of the functions of the clouds. <clears throat> scripture <clears throat> Scripture indicates the saints have their own cloud centers in the heaven of heavens. Turn to Revelation 14 verse 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud <coughs> And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. <coughs> this is a cloud that came and got him off the earth, took him into glory. Why do we describe this as own cloud centers? Mm -hmm. The way you've described it, have their own cloud centers. I immediately thought of a location in which all the clouds were gathered until they were needed. No. I'm saying that each one has a cloud place okay. for himself. Mm. Part of your estate. Yeah. Turn to Psalms 148, 149, verse 5. Does it also become part of us? It's already part of you. It's part of our spirit. Yeah. So it's not a, a vet in the garage it's, it's a whatever we decide to. Sure. That sounds like a button in the garage to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing so simplistic. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Psalms, Psalms 149, 149. <clears throat> verse 5. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Stunning. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. And we mm. just saw a picture of that in Revelation 14. Mm. It's the center of your repose. Right, okay. That's in glory. Okay. So you, you could describe it for as an abode. It's 
what we're going to do. That's the next description. And where I'm going is how much time then, then is spent in the cloud since there's a bed there? Time? Yes, of course. I know. I, time. I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to Exodus 24, verse 15 to 18. <clears throat> Scripture indicates the cloud can be used as a habitation, right. as in a boat. Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. So the cloud covers the whole mountain. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord abode upon the mount, Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. <clears throat> and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. <clears throat> and Moses went into the midst of the cloud mm. and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. This is habitation. Right. I'm sure I've seen it described as a tabernacle. The cloud described as a tabernacle? Mm. Is that right? Um, maybe I'm, I'm confusing things. Mm, I don't think so. No? Okay. Could be wrong, but I don't remember seeing it described in that way. So when Moses went up for the Ten Commandments, and uh, YHVH says, "I'll let you see my back parts," but he's in he's he's in a cloud. No, not when that happened, he was on Earth. Mm. That was after that. <clears throat> when he went up into the cloud, there were several that went up with him, but he went furthest into the cloud. They, they were not allowed to go all the way with him. And he's there 40 days and 40 nights. Writing the <coughs> Pentateuch, the Word, so you're saying the books there, of the Bible. He had contemporaries with him on the mount for 40 days? They were outside. Yeah. He was so in I the center. I didn't know that there was somebody else with him for yeah. 40 days. Outside yeah. the cloud. Well, they were on the mount. Right. But they were within counts. the cloud. Okay. But Moses was in the center okay. of the cloud with YHVH. So then that raises Joshua the Joshua was up there. Mm -hmm. uh, so all the elders of Israel was up there. Was when Moses came down, Joshua says, uh, there's a sound of noise in the camp. Okay. Well, there's not rebelling there, rebel, rebelling against God. You're going to go down there and judge them. So you had a group that were on the mountain in the cloud right. for the same time as Moses. <coughs> Moses came down with uh, a shining face. Did the others, did their faces shine? Uh, the inference is no. Okay. Because they weren't in... In the center. Right. right. Yeah, in the presence of YG. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his cloud, to cover the mount, obviously is very large. This implies that we can increase or decrease the size of our sure. as needed. Sure. There's no limit to it. <coughs> There's the time when YHVH just wraps the cloud around himself. Right. It comes down and stands and talks to Moses. Same cloud. <coughs> Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 33 to 34. <coughs> Matter of fact, hmm. matter of fact, um, okay, we just we could do this story at another time. It's fascinating when they went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, but we're only going to read 33 and 34. It came to pass as they departed from him. 
talking about Moses and Elijah who had been talking to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias, not knowing what he said. So he's not, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Verse 34, While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. There came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. It's a shame, it's an embarrassment for God the Father tells you to shut up. That's exactly what's being said here. But you see the, the, the aspect of the cloud. The Father has a cloud, the Son has a cloud, the glorified sons have clouds. Mm. But I get the impression that the Father's voice could have come from anywhere you want. Sure, but he's in the cloud. Why? Because the scripture says so. Yeah, I get that. Why? Why? Why is the Father in the cloud? Why, why, isn't, he, why isn't he in Ephraim saying the same thing? Because he chooses to come down to the ground level to glorify his son. Okay. <clears throat> so this, saying, this is my son. He says, This is my son twice. Mm. Yes. He's so pleased with him. So we see <clears throat> everybody in the family <laughs> is going to have a cloud. Everybody in the family. In the family of God, the sons of God. Mm. Turn to 1 Corinthians, 10th chapter, verse 1 to 2. Cloud has a distinctive um, part in uh, <coughs> the activities of uh, Israel. We understand that the sons of God have clouds. Mm -hmm. What about those who are born again and are not protagonists? Do they have clouds? No. Interesting. No. The elders they have clouds? Yeah, protagonists, yeah. Here we go. First Corinthians 10th chapter, verse 1 to 2. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. He's talking about the parting of the Red Sea, the time when uh, Pharaoh's army got drowned. It was considered a type of baptism because they're immersed in the cloud. The cloud carries them from where they started <coughs> To where they ended up. You see this in uh, turn to Deuteronomy 29, verses 5 to 6. And I've led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you, and thy shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot. They're in the cloud. <clears throat> They're in a different reality. There is no aging. There is no deterioration of uh, wear and tear on anything. They look the same day that they left Egypt as they did when they got to the Promised Land. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> what happened basically is the, t is the, the cloud <clears throat> shuts down <clears throat> the natural order of things. So Everybody in, in it is in a different reality. Yeah, that's right. that's, okay. yes. Cloud by day, fire by night. 
So this cloud stayed with them 40 years? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's what it says. And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you. The shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. You have not eaten bread. Neither have you drunk wine or strong drink that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. They never ate any normal food, they ate manna. <clears throat> they never drank anything. So for 40 years they never drank wine. Not even new wine. No, nothing. So they drank water. They drank water. Mm. Which was purified in the cloud. Mm. So it gives us an understanding that the cloud can be a form of habitation which can give eternality to those that are within its presence. Yes. Sir, so are you saying they they walked and existed in the cloud for 40 years or they were directed by the Lord for, or the cloud for they 40 years? They were in the cloud for so 40 years. That's interesting because it's... That would seem peculiar, Mr. Jones. Why? Why? Because <laughs> I'm human and, okay. and I can't see, you know. Well, the idea is this. <clears throat> I mean, seeing a distance off, you're in a cloud, you can, you know, your distance you see is not as... Well, the cloud in that, in that, in this particular c capacity is transparent. Okay. And you can see the desert all around them. That's why they're carping and griping and complaining. But they don't realize that they're shielded from the bad effects of what they're seeing because yeah. they're in this alternate yeah, reality. That, that is amazing. That is <coughs> one more thing that I didn't know that just astounds me. How ignorant can a person get? You know, my goodness. Ten times. The miracles took place within the cloud. Mm. So the reality that we're talking about, which wine tree surrounds them with is really the extension of the physical cloud that he's talking about. Well, it's not a physical, it's a spiritual cloud, which transforms the physical reality, alters the physical reality Agreed. to an eternality. Agreed. But the people outside are seeing a cloud and a whole line of Jews walking behind it. And I'm pointing out that the cloud is an extension, excuse me, the reality that white tree H has is an extension of the cloud that somebody could see as a human if they were looking at it. Well, the reason that they could see the cloud was because white tree H has to cover himself, otherwise they get wiped out. Okay. But they're within the cloud. So they're in this cloud, and the cloud is being led by something you can see. Right. But it's all one unity okay. that's, that they're incorporated in. Because we just read, he says, your clothes never wore mm -hmm. out, you never got hungry, mm -hmm. you never aged. They never appreciated and understood where they were at and what they could well, have gotten. Mr. Jones, it doesn't say in Scripture, and I apologize for the question I'm about to ask you. Forty years, Mr. Jones. I would imagine that all their digestive systems were functioning correctly. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... But you don't... It doesn't... <coughs> they didn't eliminate. Mm. <laughs> none of that. Urinate, defecate, none of that. Because That's they weren't news eating... To me, Mr. Jones. They weren't eating natural food. Okay. So they, they were eating eternal food that was okay. energizing them. Okay. So the natural, well, I'm using the word natural, it's not natural at all, but the atrophy sort of, uh, 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 ascribed to the human condition, the human order, is just held in the bank. Sure. Completely wiped sure. out. I would imagine no haircuts, no cutting toenails. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Not a hair out of place. No blow on your nose. Nothing, no colds, no sickness, no nothing. Did they gain comprehension of anything? while in that state. They could have, if but they, they chose they not could. to. Right, okay. They were in a situation where all they had to do was to 
look to where they were going and um, understand where they were at. That's why he did the miracles to show them, hey, you're in a supernatural situation. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of it. Let your faith grow and prepare you for where you are going. Humans yeah. thinking. Too busy carping, griping, and complaining. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Because, you know, after, after 40 years, you know, the menu hasn't changed enough. So, you know, we have to complain now about it. There's another aspect to it, too. The generation. He said that this um, <clears throat> generation would drop in the desert. So what does that mean? That means that when YSVH deemed one of the participants was under judgment's time, he would just come out from underneath the cloud and psh, expire in the desert. Mm. That was their judgment. Yeah. Mm. And the whole generation would generation have that way. Judgment. Yeah. Mm. With the exception of Moses and Aaron, they died a natural death. But everybody else, of course, is riding in the desert. So what we see here <coughs> is part of the inheritance that awaits the overcoming saint. And in this respect, <clears throat> what happens at the time of the glorification? Okay, so what we find here is an aspect of our inheritance as sons of God. When this takes place, it will take place as a group setting. Turn to Romans 8. Romans 8, 17. <clears throat> and if children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So what does this mean? This means in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, at the change, we come into everything instantaneously. The cloud, the light, the glory, everything we've been talking to becomes yours instantaneously. Yes. Before this, at the gathering, we get part of our inheritance. Yes. This is the completion. <clears throat> the scripture talks about the inheritance is given to every man severally as he will. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15. Because the inheritance that you're going to receive at the gathering is unique in that it only, and it only includes one group out of the Prototokos. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22 and 23. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. So he's not talking about everybody. It's going to be made alive at the same time. Every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Afterward they that are Christ at his coming. How many times is he going to come? Twice. Actually three times. <laughs> Well, yeah, sure. If you get a call, call the gathering, 
one of the appearances. That's the first coming. Rapture is the second coming. Second coming is the third. Each time he comes, he's going to give somebody a reward. And John Supper. Yes, our group is going to be the first one to be rewarded. Absolutely. Every man in his own order. Why? Because we're being prepared first. Mm. If we're being prepared so we can prepare our brothers. So we get our reward first and they get their reward and then those that are outside the prototokias get their reward the second coming. What's amazing is that he chose us from eternity to be these ones that bring in the change. Well, you know, the sad part about that is there could be a lot more of us if people were only interested in what the scripture is saying here. But they have better things to do. So, Brother Jones, I have to believe he's got a surprise for us in that although it's still a few, yeah. we're going to we're going to have contemporaries, brothers that have that are like-minded. Oh, sure. That are going to add to us and us to them. Sure. <coughs> Definitely. Completing God's master plan in amazement. Definitely. But the idea, even in that situation, you're just looking at it drop in the bucket. Oh, human race is going to hell. Eight billion people. The number of those that basically are going to be blessed can only be numbered in the millions. I don't think you have one billion out of the eight billion that are going to receive everything that, just like ancient Israel. Jesus came and gave his credentials. They rejected him as a nation with a handful of people that had received them. It's the same thing with what you have here. So, Mr. Jones, we see this this creation. We see his master plan. And, and we understand the necessity of evil. Isaiah 45, 7. The thing of it is, Mr. Jones, to have so many consequentially lost for the few that we will be it seems to make a lot of room for he did it in a different way another another time before this one or after this one or whatever a creation well, well in my way of thinking Josie I see a, a, a room for another version of, the, of a creation and uh, you mean where things turned out differently well no I guess it has to have evil. Every one of the creations would have to have evil, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> the human race basically makes itself expendable. It's unfortunate. The Father <clears throat> doesn't want it that way, but people choose it that way. It's necessary that there be evil, but woe to him through whom it comes. Yeah. They make it that way.